The economic impact of COVID-19. How does it change your financial strategy and your financial planning? Hello, Ray Wright from RevOp Squared here. Welcome to this edition of the KPI Benchmark Index video blog. Today we're going to be talking about the economic impact of COVID-19 and how it's impacting SaaS companies' financial strategy and planning. So let me start with some research that we've been conducting over the last couple weeks in concert with Sandhill.com. The Sandhill Group has been an advisor to software and SaaS companies for over 23 years, since 1997. And they hold the by invitation only um, executive event for the top 100 SaaS CEOs every year called the Enterprise Conference. And what we found was number one, was the concept of speed over greed is critical to financial strategy. And what that means is if you have currently been in a fundraising round and you've got a term sheet in front of you and the investor comes back and is looking at a 10, 20, even 30% down in the pre-money valuation, go ahead and accept that, close it, and get the money in the bank. Why? Number one, the best-in-class investors are recommending 24 months of cash reserves. Number two, you never know exactly how this market's gonna unfold over the next 90 days, 180 days next year. So having the cash in the bank and be able to emerge even stronger on the other side of this is always a best practice. Number two, if you do have a credit line available, make sure you draw that down and put it into your cash reserves. And if you don't currently have a credit line, go to your local bank, Silicon Valley Bank's Greg, Comerica, whoever your local bank is, and look at, based upon your financials over the last quarter, two quarters, four quarters, could you be available for um, additional loans? It might even be an ARR funded loan. But go ahead and look at that and try to draw it down as quickly as possible. And of course, look at the Paycheck Protection Program from the federal government and SBA. Now there's some discussion whether venture back startups, SaaS companies, can actually take advantage of that because of the affiliation rule, and I won't bore you or take a lot of your time today, but work with your local bank and see if they have access to that PPP program. So the second thing is regarding um, financial modeling. So as we've done research, we've talked over to a couple hundred SaaS companies over the last three weeks. What we're finding is a couple kind of common themes of how we do our scenario planning. One is if you've been a high growth company, growing in that 40%, 60%, 80%, one scenario you should plan for is reducing that growth at least in half. So if you were at 50% growth, project it to be at 25% growth and look at modeling that and how that impacts your revenue growth and also your expense controls that you need to take. However, you also should do another kind of worst case scenario plan and we're recommending that that should be at least 30 to 40% reduced revenue over the next 12 months. And you should look at new customer acquisition going down at least 50% up to 80%. Now that's gonna be dependent upon the profile of your target market and your existing customers. And there's five attributes recommended to kind of segment your customers. One is what industry are they in? And that's pretty, pretty easy to understand. If they're in the hospitality, restaurant, airline industry, that's gonna be much uh, more negative on your scenario than if they're in the healthcare or video communications or data center infrastructure. Second thing to look at is their geography. Once again, if your company's headquartered in New York and they sell primarily to small, medium-sized businesses in New York, that's a different impact on scenario planning. Size of customer. If you focus on SMBs, that's gonna have a much more dramatic impact on your scenario planning than if you're focused on large multinational enterprise companies. So make sure you segment also by the size of company. And then the last thing is look at the financial health of each individual company. So that's not cohort or segment based. That is, if you're focused on the automotive industry, go and look at the balance sheet, the cash reserves, the quick ratios, even their debt and leverage, because you may find that automotive company A versus automotive company B is a much more um, good target for both expansion and or new customer acquisition. Then after you do these segmentations, 
you also should apply that not only after your new targets, but your existing customers to then think about churn, both gross dollar retention rate and net dollar retention rate. In our next video blog, we'll talk more about what the market research and surveys have told us about what to expect from churn. Thank you very much.